Good evening, everyone. Welcome to part 2 of 800 of my tutorial series on how to create professional quality animations in 3D Studio Max. For those of you who have seen my previous video, please continue watching. There is nothing further I require of you. For those of you who have not seen the first part, please click the annotation here. Or check the description below. This is mandatory. In this part we will be creating the shopkeeper, Mr. Textured Oblate Spheroid. A spheroid is sphere-like, but not a perfect sphere. A sufficient analogy to this shape is the planet Earth, which boulders along the equator due to the centrifugal force of the Earth's rotation. Now, let's get started. We'll start by creating a sphere, which we will then squash, thus creating a spheroid. In a similar fashion to the previous video, we will be adding mouth and eye holes. It is not stated in the script whether he is smiling or frowning. I will make him frowning. He is not happy working his retail job, however he requires funds to buy and maintain little politically incorrect gollywog figures that he keeps in a drawer. This one is holding a teddy bear. Remember to connect up any gratuitous vertices. I will also give him a nose so he can smell. You can press G to remove the grid. I will extrude the nose hole out into a long sausage-like shape. Extrude the mouth inside and stitch together the vertices as shown. This will be sufficient. Do the same with the eye holes. As with the previous model, create eyes and insert them into the eye holes. Select the main model and attach the eyes. The model is now complete. Please remember to save. Now for the next portion we will require an image editing program. I will be using Photoshop, however other programs are available. I have found a low resolution image of film actor Jackie Chan. I will now cut out his eyes and replace them with a dark crimson red. Now find a picture of an eye. I have chosen a picture of a squid and will cut the eye out. The body will be discarded. Cephalopod eyes are quite interesting as they possess many qualities of vertebrate eyes despite having taken a vastly different evolutionary path. This is different from other eye types such as compound eyes which contain many tiny lenses. Seriously, just look at this thing. It's horrifying. Cut out the film actor's mouth also and replace that with the crimson red. Save the image as a low-resolution 
JPEG and move your copy of Photoshop into the recycling bin. It will not be needed from here on. Back in 3D Studio Max, apply the created texture from the Material Editor. Next, select the model and add a Unwrap UVW modifier. Select Open UV Editor and select the texture from this box. Move all of the polygons to a small section of Jackie Chan's face. I will be putting it here. Unwrapping textures is incredibly fiddly and complicated. It's a bit like attempting to repair the Large Hadron Collider using only sticky back plastic and a dead cat. Select Polygon and select the front of the face. Align the texture so that it is facing the camera. In this case we will align to the Y axis. Now, very simply, move the polygons over Jackie Chan's face. Please ensure the spheroid's eye holes are over Jackie Chan's eye holes. This polygon here has not been added. We will add it now. And we will stitch it onto the rest. We will now stitch the vertices together using target weld. This is already looking a lot like film actor Jackie Chan. Ensure the spheroid's mouth hole is aligned with Jackie Chan's mouth hole. We will select the inside of the mouth separately. and place it inside the mouth of film actor Jackie Chan. This will be sufficient. Next, we will select the eye sockets. Next, select the eyes and hit Grow. This will select all of the eyes. To begin with, we will make the eyes smaller, very small, and insert them somewhere onto the squid eye. We will then select the fronts of the eyes as shown. It appears some rogue polygons have decided to get in the way. These will be discarded. As these two eyes will be identical, we can overlay them thus saving precious computer memory. Please insert the eyes over the squid eyes. This has been an extremely rough job, purely for demonstration purposes. I am a very busy man and have to catch a bus in 17 hours, so I will not be texturing the back of him. The texturing portion of the tutorial is now complete.
Please remember to save. Now we will add morph targets. Create several copies of the spheroid and collapse the modifiers as shown. What a happy little inbred family we have here. We will start with the closed mouth. We will select the top part of the mouth and I will select an FFD modifier and I will close a portion of the mouth. I will now do the same with the bottom parts. The mouth is now closed. This one will blink. I like to squash the eyes ever so slightly when a character blinks and move it back inside the head like a crab. This eye is now closed. Please do the same for the other eye. Both eyes are now closed. Mouth shapes can also be created, such as OO, AH, and E mouths in this situation. Okay. <clears throat> for this one, however, we will just be making an OO mouth for demonstration purposes. I have selected all the polygons within the mouth using a similar technique to before, only different. We will create the OO mouth. As you can tell, the mouth is making a shape as if he's going OOOH. You can also give him different expressions. You can make him happy. You can make him look surprised. I will be making mine look angry. Simply move the polygons around the eyes to give him angry eyes. Well, he looks very angry. He probably isn't happy that he is here. Select Spheroid Prime and add a Morpha modifier. This one right here. And pick object from scene. Select the next box and repeat. Now we can cycle between the different mouth movements blink movements, mouth shapes and expressions. You can make as many of these as you want. Creativity is not discouraged. Hide the abominations so you are left only with the original. Do not look at the back of him. This concludes the morph target portion of the tutorial. Please remember to save now. It states in the script here that Mr. Textured Oblate Spheroid waves as Mr. Smiley Spheroid is leaving the shop. I will create two red house bricks to serve as hands. You can texture these how you wish. I won't.
Under Selection Filter, select Bone. And then under Systems, select Bones. Now build him a spine. And give him arms leading up to the bricks. This will be sufficient. The arms can be mirrored by selecting Mirror and then Copy. Do this. And move the other one to the other side of his body to the other brick. By pressing L I can look from the left. I will select Bone again. This one will be smaller. 1.666 will be sufficient by 1.666. That is a good size. Select the bone and move it in front of the eye. Copy it. This will be so the eyes can rotate within their sockets. Select wireframe and click on select and link. Link the arm bones to the spine. And do the same with the eye bones. As you can tell, the entire skeleton structure can move simply by the movement of the spine. However, the arm and eye bones can move independently of the spine. This is very useful. Under the selection filter, change it back to all. Select the two house bricks and the spheroid. Under modifiers, go to skin. Select edit envelopes and add bones. By clicking the add button next to bones. Here are the bones. Sometimes they are hiding in little folders. We must select them all. Click on select vertices and bone 1. This is the first bone we created, which is the spine. Click on one of the vertices and select grow 100 times. Under weight properties and abs effect, move the slider up to 1. As you can tell, this is color coded with red equaling 1 and 0 equaling nothing. This is so children can understand it. With the exception of colorblind children, colorblind children must pay close attention to the abs effect slider. Select the eyes and do the same, only different as shown. And again with the other eye. Now do the same with the arm bones. In this instance, the arm bones have already been attached to the house bricks, which are serving as this monstrosity's foul excuse for hand. The model is now completed. He can move his spine. He can look around with his eyes. He can wave you goodbye as you are leaving his shop. He can speak. He can blink so his eyes do not get dry. He can go ooh when you say double entendre. And he can scowl as you enter the shop. As a final touch, you can smooth him. And you can give him a little hat to wear. This concludes the advanced modelling portion of the tutorial series. Please go away until next time. In part 3 we will be making the interior of the shop. Please go away.